Welcome back to Truck Tech, everyone. This week, we are coming back to a recurring topic, really, that we've talked about this year, which is the Volvo VNL. Today, we're going to spend some time here in High Point, North Carolina, with Brian Balicki. Brian is the head of design for Volvo Truck North America. Uh, Brian, thanks for being here on Truck Tech. This is going to be exciting because design is just a cool area, right? I mean, it's just something that people like to talk about. Maybe you can give us a little bit of how do you how do you do a design for an all new truck? You get a clean sheet of paper. Thanks, Ellen. Yeah, it's great to be here, and it's basically what you just said. It, 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 we were given a clean sheet of paper. Obviously, we had a lot of criteria from the greenhouse gas initiative, and also we're looking at our electrical architecture. We wanted to make sure that we con considered all of those aspects when developing the new platform and the new VNL. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, I think, just by way of background, you know, you come out of the uh, Center for Creative Studies in, in Detroit. That's been a few years. Uh, you've been at Volvo 22 years, I believe. Correct. But you actually joined the studio right from there. And of course, you know, Center for Creative Studies is, is one of those places, one of those A-list design houses, really, that creates the next re uh, generation of, of designers. Um, yeah, that, College for Creative Studies is the NBA draft of the art industry, basically. Uh, it was great to be able to, you know, meet different uh, individuals from the industry, both automotive and our heavy class eight industry. Uh, and I uh, had the opportunity to come down here and really just get my career going. And it was really profound to walk into the studio and be able to not only work on someone's office space, but design their living space and then the overall look and feel of the product. And, you know, when we think about it, and when I think about the Center of Creative Studies or Art Center in Pasadena or any of these, you know, a lot of them really are focused, uh, a lot of the efforts uh, are focused on portfolios or focused on uh, passenger vehicles, right? Correct. People spend time in their passenger cars, but they live in their trucks. That's what you were just describing. Yeah, at weeks at a time. And it's really important, you know, to consider items like storage and ergonomics and getting to and from the different spaces and you know, they're used differently than a passenger vehicle. Mm -hmm. And plus they have to go for many, many days at a time, whereas sometimes passenger vehicles don't always do that. All right. You mentioned, and we'll just cover this quickly because, you know, we've had episodes on, you know, electrical and things like that, but you had to sort of uh, at least incorporate or work around either way, uh, things like, you know, the 24 volt system and things like that. Uh, this is all in the early stages, right? Correct. It, it really optimizes the way the features are laid out in the product, but also how it manages the battery system, the electrical flow to and from the you know, engine compartment to the driving environment to the living environment. They all have to work together as a symphony. And because the vehicle is so large and has to carry so many functions, it was important for us to make that step for efficiency and economics reasons. When you started again with a clean sheet 90 percent all new truck first time that we really had a purpose-built over-the-road truck for north america from volvo right correct and so it's more than just you know putting a bonnet on somebody else's yeah. uh, vehicle uh you know volvo's vehicle really um but but this time you know you this is a seven-year gestation period it went on for a long time yeah, we started back in 2016. We were actually still working with our legacy product and getting ready to introduce that. Mm -hmm. And then we were given this uh, mandate, you know, when it comes to greenhouse gas initiatives, looking at the electrical architecture platform, really understanding what we wanted to do with this product. And we knew we couldn't do it with our legacy product. So we had to make this huge jump. Right. Well, and I guess, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, you were thinking about greenhouse gases and, and, and what might be happening, we've got phase three coming in 2027. This truck Correct. obviously meets those, yes. uh, you know, and so that that's one of the punch lists that has to be, you know, uh, considered by the by the purchaser. Um, I, I am curious, though, you know, this truck now, uh, as it replaces the legacy truck, you're talking 10, 15 years worth. How do you get into some of those longer range things as you think about design? Our job as designers is to create the vision, not just the birth of the product, but the, the entire life of the product. Mm -hmm. So we really want to make sure that we consider how the platform and the all new VNL will be used, what kind of markets they'll be found in, and then what kind of um, requirements and legislation we might have to work with. So all those were considered when creating this new design. 
another thing that you had to consider were, were alternative powertrains, electrification, you've teased it. I don't know much about it yet. Uh, autonomy with Aurora Innovation. Uh, you know, so those are a couple other executions. Uh, did that play into the design function? Yes, it did. We really had to make sure that this had a lot of flexibility. The Ulmu VNL allowed for different configurations, different builds. Uh, that is another very unique difference between the passenger car market and what we do. Uh, we have to really make sure that these vehicles can be configured almost like a transformer, if you will, to change them in and out, to add different powertrain, to add different functions but to still serve the purpose in the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's a, it, you don't make money if the truck doesn't run, and we know all That's that. That's right. You know, I guess I'm also curious, uh, you know, from a design perspective, because sometimes I get design and styling mixed up, right? And yeah, it happens, hear that. right? Yeah, yeah. I, it, it happens. You've got a, a beautiful style, really, on the on the new truck. I mean, you know, the, the, the almost wedge, I guess that's accurate. Yeah, that's correct. Kind of the, the, the wedge front and things like that. You know, Everybody has rocks and trees in their studios, right? And they, they look at things like that. Yeah. You took this a, a good bit further with a, a word that's still new to me, biome. Maybe you can talk us through what the biomes are sure. that went into this. We wanted to make sure that this product was connected to our customers. So we focused on North America. It's a large, beautiful continent that has these vast different regions, which are referred to as biomes. We specifically selected a range of biomes like the desert, the prairie, coastal forest, arctic tundra, and we as human beings create a biome called the urban or anthropogenic biome. And this is made up of cities and towns and, you know, all these different textures and animals and colors. They're all uniquely different to that biome. And that allowed us to bring that into a visual strategy that then determine the trim levels and the look and feel and the emotion you get from the product. Mm -hmm. So the idea behind these biomes and what we've captured here is to build an emotion and a mood that we can bring into the products. You know, these drivers are going through these areas and they, they experience these things mm -hmm. and they experience these areas and we want them to realize that we're trying to connect to them. The, the truck itself from, uh, you know, from concept, uh, I don't know how many you went through. Ooh, a few. Quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how close to the truck that is now in production uh, uh, did it come out? I am happy to say that our design team was able to retain the design intent almost from the get-go. You know, the Volvo look and feel has a very unique aesthetic, and it's important that we continue to build on that, even when we do uh, have to build, bake in different criteria. So being able to transition from where we started at the beginning of the project to production, uh, we're very pleased with that result. Uh, we're very pleased that it is designed to change everything, and that was one of the mindsets that we had when we were working on this product. Mm -hmm. Well, and you can say that when it's ninety percent all new, right? Correct. It designed to change everything. I I want to I want to spend a few minutes. We're going to look at some pictures here, and I want to stop a couple times, uh, and I want you to to tell us a little bit about that that uh, you know concept to reality kind of uh, sure. kind of thing. And and you know as we look at these, maybe you can tell me you know kind of where you started and where you got to. Yeah. Go ahead. So the the headlights are obviously all new for this VNL, and we really wanted to make sure that uh, we increased the look and feel of the product through safety, through aerodynamics. Uh, the packaging of the actual components are improved. So servicing and installing from the production side is improved. Uh, both the visibility and the, the actual technology is increased in this product. Uh, it allows to see it further down the road. They have the daylight running lamps that are now increased in visibility and you can see them from multiple angles. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge jump for us. And plus it just reinforces the look and feel of the brand. Yeah, that that design of the of the headlights so actually carried over to, to to some other areas. I think you used a word I can't remember right now for, for you know, how you did it, it influence the interior as well. Or, 
Correct. What we implemented onto the headlights is the elevation pattern. Mm -hmm. And the elevation pattern really does tie the entire product together in a cohesive way. Uh, and you can see that echoed in the door panel. You can see it echoed in the instrument panel. You can see it echoed in many other areas like the floor mat inserts and the living environment. And this just tells the customer this is one unique product. Put together. Put together. It's put together, yeah. And when we think about, you know, uh, getting a vehicle and, and we know, you know, you and I were talking about, you know, uh, the cost of pickup trucks and, 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 the, and the work that goes into them to, you know, truly create these luxury experiences. I mean, with the VNO, you're doing that now. I mean, you know, this is like, okay, I'm probably going to live in here if I'm an over-the-road trucker. And I know you have a day cap too, but, but the fact is that, that you know, you're, you're creating a home environment, really. Is that accurate? That is very accurate. Uh, our bread and butter, I would say, is our sleeper market. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that the level of comfort is always elevated in these products. Uh, in a legacy product, we looked to, to introduce this airline class feel, mm -hmm. and we've just built on that and elevated that, uh, really thinking about how to use that space. And you'll see that in the VersaBunk configuration. I was going to say the, the Murphy bed yep, that the you Murphy have. Bed right? configuration yeah. that, allows it not to just become two different setups, but three now. So you can really collapse the table into the, the Murphy bed bottom and then show the open space and that could be used differently. Mm -hmm. The Delta One of trucks? <laughs> we hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess then there are other things that, that go into the design as you are, are looking at it. What, what are we not talking about that we should be uh, in terms of the design work? You know, it's the amount of detail and attention that's put into areas that customers wouldn't necessarily look at the first time, but then they see it in a second read or a third read. And, you know, sometimes they don't even realize that a lot of design was put into something. And that usually means it's a great design. You know, when you don't have an issue with it and it does what it's supposed to do and it feels right and it looks right, that's a great design. Right. And for us, that was always the key when going through every single area or every single component. Uh, the driving environment is a very complicated area, has a lot of functions, a very specific layout is required from a truck driving experience. And, you know, a lot of safety items have to be readily available. So all these layouts were looked at through clinics and focus groups and we want to make sure that the feel and the look and the texture and the color all make sense for the Volvo brand and the customers. Let's talk about color. Hold up your wrist for a moment with the watch. That color is for real in the truck. You want to explain? Yes. So this is the Sula blue color. I'm kind of obsessed with the, the trim levels, obviously, uh, but it is something that comes from the Arctic tundra, uh, one of the birds that's found there and they have the blue feet. And you can okay. see this in Google, uh, but the, you know, it's just these accent colors that remind customers, this is a very technologically advanced product. This uh, speaks to the Volvo brand, but we want to make sure that innovation is not just seen within the components, but also on the trim levels. They're, they light, they're lit, aren't they? These colors? There are some areas of the product that we do eliminate. Uh, we do have our um, ambient colors that, you know, kind of showcase the different openings and areas that uh, require some kind of motion or uh, accessibility. Mm -hmm. yep. And you have some other colors besides this one. We do. We have the race runner green. We have the reflector orange. Uh, we have quite a few. Uh, this gives different options for the customers to choose from depending on their need. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking up to this truck for the first time, and I and I have done that, uh, and and of course, I, as I mentioned, the, the wedge shape and things like that, there are certain things that that are, are remarkable from you know just seeing it from a drivability standpoint. How important or how how much influence does the design of the truck have on drivability? Is that just the way an emotional feel connection, or what is that? I would say that a lot of the different stakeholders have to work in concert to make that happen because yes, the design is very important, but the engineering, uh, the safety aspect, making sure that we make uh, all the criteria uh, work in tune. So for instance, looking over the hood of the product, we have hood mirrors that increase safety. All those are depicted by many different areas of the company. We want to make sure that it's the best it can be for our customers. Mm -hmm. So we put a lot of time and attention into that. 
uh, when it comes to optimizing the steering mechanism and the, the functions on the steering wheel, all those are important and they require a lot of input from different groups uh, and a lot of testing for that matter. Here's a word I heard years ago in design uh, and it's called snickness. The snickness of how interesting how a how a switch feels yeah. and things like that. So so you measured in, in yeah. I mean, it, for us, it's haptics, right? It's really like right. the yep. feedback that you get yep. from a control. And sure. we were very happy with how a lot of the controls turned out. You know, you get this very premium uh, rotary functions. The illumination is very high end, uh, and then the way the information is brought to the users is in a very intelligent and organized way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brian, I'll give you the final word. What what are we missing that we should be talking about from a design perspective? This is all, this is so important as the truck is just now beginning to, uh, you know, show up, uh, uh, you know, deliveries start here in the, in the quarter. Uh, uh, what are we missing? What, what one thing do you want the, the viewers, the, the watchers of Truck Tech to know that we haven't covered? So one thing for us is if they say, you know what, they really thought about me in my job and what I do in my day-to-day -day job, that means that we have done our job very well. And for us, that's, that's huge, right? Uh, that's why we do this. We want to make sure that we positively improve the industry. We positively improve the products. And we definitely can do that through design. Sure. So Brian, you know, you do your work in a studio. Usually there's a lot of security around studios in, in certainly in automotive and I'm sure in, yes. in truck. Not everybody can come see what you're doing. Uh, you know, as you get closer to a launch, you tease things here and there. You know, there's a teaser that comes out. Uh, yeah. Usually can't tell much from those, by the way. I guess that's by design. That's, the intent. that's by design, Correct. right? That's a pun. But anyway, Brian, you know, now people have seen it. You've had the dealers have seen it, the customers have seen it. What are you hearing back? What it, is it is it affirming? I presume it is. It is, and I think there's a lot of surprise, right? I mean, I think that a lot of people are pleasantly pleased with the change and the look and feel, and you know, it's really making sure that it is going to look modern and innovative further down the road. Uh, evolution versus revolution. Where does it fall on that continuum? I would say more towards the revolution side because we did change 90% of the truck. Right, right. Brian, thanks so much for being Absolutely. part of Truck Tech today. Thanks, Alan. Uh, folks, next week we're going to uh, catch up with Alan Schaefer from the Engine Technology Forum. Alan, if you are readers of the newsletter, we had some, some time with Alan a few weeks ago in print. We're gonna talk about a number of things, including the upcoming presidential election uh, on next week's show. We hope you'll join us then, and thanks for being here today. Mm -hmm.